And so, and in large amounts of cases, they're not moving to the hyperscalers. They're moving to sovereign clouds or moving to uh, neo clouds or specialized cloud providers, AI cloud providers, or back to their own hardware, either on a managed service provider or on a co-location provider because of the cost of the stuff. And that becomes much more important. So I got that one right. So the next prediction was much less obvious, and that was the fact that multi-clouds will explode. And so I predicted the shift away from single vendor cloud to uh, multi-cloud strategies for many of the enterprises out there, and they're prioritized around flexibility, workload optimization. And this was defying the industry belief that most customers would consolidate to a primary cloud provider. So if you think back to 2011 to 2000 you know, 15 and probably a few years after that, the larger cloud providers were talking to everybody about consolidation. In other words, you might as well jump on the bandwagon and move all of your workloads and move all of your data sets into our cloud offering because everything is going to move that way no matter what you do. You're going to provide inexpensive re use of resources. We already talked about that. Why, that, why that's not true. Flexibility and the ability to do anything you want with those resources. That ended up not being true. And so many of the enterprises and looking to expand their cloud footprint looked to many different cloud providers and private cloud providers and sovereign cloud providers and heterogeneous use of the cloud platforms because a single cloud platform provider wasn't going to be the best of breed for every one of their applications and data sets out there. So if you're truly going to find the best of breed technology on a cloud system, in other words, the technology is going to bring the most value back to the business, it's almost never ever going to be a single cloud platform. And so that's why multi-cloud was born.